from Seattle, Washington. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube. On the ground at LinuxCon North America 2015. Now, here's your host, Jeff Frick. Hi, Jeff Rick here with theCUBE. We are on the ground in downtown Seattle, uh, Washington for LinuxCon North America. We came up to the great Northwest to check out what's going on and uh, there's a lot of excitement. Excited in this next segment to be joined by Keith Packer, distinguished Linux technologist for HP. Welcome. Thank you, sir. So, you're working on some fun and exciting things. You're working on the machine. Yeah, in January, I got an opportunity to move to HP and come and start working on Linux on the machine. So I've been to, uh, to many HP Discovers, I've seen many presentations on the machine, but for those of the people out there that aren't familiar with it, give them kind of a quick overview of what is the machine, what's the vision of the machine, why should they start paying attention to, uh, to more notices about to the more machine? more notices. Um, so the machine is actually a, a collection of technologies. The, the basic idea is we have three, three, three ideas. We have uh, uh, silicon doing computation, our traditional uh, CPUs. We have photonics, which is uh, silicon photonics, an uh, optical interconnect between uh, be direct between integrated circuits, and then we have the new HP Memristor, which is a high-density, low-power uh, storage technology, and we're combining those together into an enormous machine with a large amount of compute and a large amount of memory. Uh, we're building a demonstrate a, a initial initial version of the machine. We're building uh, building right now. We'll have um, 80 nodes. Uh, with four terabytes of memory on every node for a total of 320 terabytes and 80 CPUs. One more time on the stats there. Yeah, 320 terabytes of, of, uh, of, not, memory. of memory and 80 CPUs in a single rack. So you guys are really talking about next gen along all three cores of, of, of what makes basically computing. It's compute and store and moving of the data. That's right. We're building. We're massively, massively uh, parallel computation, a photonic interconnect, direct silicon to silicon photonic interconnect, and our next generation non-volatile memory storage, the Memristor. So fun and exciting stuff. You're here at LinuxCon. What percentage of the software that runs the machine is going to be open source? Uh, the only operating system we're, we're, work we're doing on the machine is all going to be under the GPL, so everything is free software. Awesome. And then what are some of the, the problems that you, or, or even kind of to the application space, in terms of how you're going to use all this compute power uh, with the machine? What are some of the things you guys want to tackle with this with the monster? Well, one of the big problems, that, one of the big opportunities that we have is that we have a phenomenal amount of memory. Uh, 320 terabytes is more than most people put in their typical telephone these days. And uh, the Linux kernel's not quite ready for that. <laughs> and so we have a lot of work to do in the actual operating system itself to get it ready to support that, that amount of memory. Um, we also are building a massively parallel machine with up to 80 CPUs. And so our, our optical interconnect is going to be very different than, uh, than what people are used to right now. It's no longer cache coherent. So that's going to be a lot of software challenges on the, in the application space to deal with the new memory architecture. So what does that mean, no longer cache coherent? That means when one CPU writes data to memory, you have to, you have to communicate with the other CPUs to tell it, oh, by the way, I may have changed something. And you have to do a lot of work in software to make sure the data is actually transmitted between the CPUs correctly and not there aren't any data collisions or data corruption. So you're distinguished, you get to play with the toys before they're ready for GA. Absolutely. What is the timing on this thing? And again, what are some of the applications that you guys envision that you can tackle today with this type of horsepower that you couldn't tackle before? So this is for enormous data sets. Uh, so the, we have the advantage that all the memory is shared among all the processors. So if you have a phenomenally huge data set, a large graph problem, a big sorting problem, a big data analytics problem, that's what this machine is really designed to tackle. But this is like big, big, big data. This isn't like your typical big data, right? This is a pretty specialized <laughs> machine. This isn't uh, kind of what people are trying to do every day now with, with consumer sentiment and operational data, systems of intelligence. You guys are moving way, way, way beyond that. So I would imagine it's got to be weather, crazy serious physics, those types of problems. Absolutely, anything with anything with a lot of data. We're talking about uh, being able to do stu uh, data analytics on stuff like uh, engine data from every airplane in the world flying simultaneously all the engine data from every airplane. One more time, so all the engine data from every airplane flying all over the world simultaneously. Yeah. Because engines get thrown out all the time. It's kind of a funny big data use case, right? 747 throws, and we're close to Boeing, so I guess it's only appropriate, right? Absolutely. Throws out so much data you know, per hour, per trip, but you just said every airplane. All of the data. 
Exactly. We're also doing a lot of work in security to allow us to partition the machine efficiently between and have multiple applications running simultaneously on the hardware, uh, secure against uh, OS and software, uh, software problems. So we're doing a bunch of work in security and a bunch of work in uh, scalability, obviously. So from a technologist's point of view, you know, what gets you out of bed in the morning to, to really have A, the power of this thing that you're building, but two, really to see the world in a different way than you saw it before and to really tackle some challenges that heretofore were just not even within the realm of grabbing? Well, in this particular case, the machine is actually solving some very long-standing problems in software that we've had for years and years and years. If you look at what a typical software application developer spends all of their time doing, they're spending their time figuring out how to use their limited memory resources as efficiently as possible, getting data in and out of the machine. With this new art, with the machine architecture, we don't have that problem anymore. So typically half to three quarters of an application's runtime is just going to vanish, along with about half the development cycle. So we're, we're talking about being able to change the software development paradigm, we're talking about being able to change the scale of problems that people are able to solve. Okay, I'm going to put you on the hook. When's GA? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an engineer, I'm not allowed to answer that question. And you're distinguished, so you get to play with it long before even the regular engineers exactly. go. All right, well super, well thanks for stopping by. Absolutely, thank terrific. you for the opportunity to chat with you today. Thanks for being here, Jeff Frick, you're watching theCUBE. We are live from Seattle, Washington at LinuxCon North America. Thanks for watching.